As a CCG board member, I'm responsible for the funding um, for um, patients within Thames Anglos, a population of about 240,000 people, and we commission services on their behalf. And so a lot of my time is spent trying to uh, reach out to patients, uh, to understand their needs, listen to their concerns, and try and um, give them some sort of idea of um, some sort of shared plan um, between us. Well, I think the ICD-11 um, classification that I heard about was, I think, very, very exciting. The fact that the ICD-10 world and the SNOMED CT world could come together. And I was particularly pleased to hear that they're not antagonistic and they support each other, which I think is a great thing. You know, today, in today's very complex world, rather than saying, I have all the answers or you don't or whatever it is, it's let's join together and work together and bring it together. Um, the, the conference itself has been great, seeing government, um, seeing um, senior NHS management and clinicians and of course the business people and the innovators out there who are trying to um, promote solutions and things, bring them all together to try and understand what the futures look like and what we can do together now to make a difference for people. I think it's great. So I think the future is exciting. ICD-11 is a method of being able to do that, but it's about working with real patients, real clinicians, real managers to actually make that happen. Um, we've been enabling patients to access their records now for over 10 years and um, over 33% of our patients now have access to their records. Um, so just some figures, 38% of our cancer patients have access, 58% of our depressed and anxious patients have access, 30% um, of our Bengali patients, many of whom don't speak a word of English, have access to their records. Um, these are all patients who um, can not just view their records but they could share their information at the point of care when it's needed and maybe perhaps in the future there could be a mechanism for them to be able to upload their data so that public health bodies, universities, maybe even the Fire Institute could actually take that data but more importantly the knowledge that they have if, if, if we can contact that patient and say look here's some data can you tell us something about it why was it collected what was the purpose were you well at that time or were you under a very stressful period of your life at that time that blood pressure then has a greater meaning to it if we can understand that patient and how that patient can help us understand that data I think we'll move much further forwards much more quickly I would like to think today when I asked the whole audience who has access to their records there was only one person who put their hand up and that was a patient who'd come from London to come and present his experience. I'd like to think that between now and next year there will be at least, and I'm going to say 10% of the audience has access to their records. The challenge now is for those people watching this video to say how can we make that happen? The technology exists. I think the next blockbuster drug is going to be this empowered patient who empowers me as a clinician and empowers the system. Well, if that's going to happen, what can we do? What can this person watching the video now do to enable more people in Wales or wherever they are to be able to access their records? And then when they do that, share their stories, their experiences, so that in 2016 we start thinking about how we can support these blockbuster drugs, the empowered patient.